Hello, my friends. Welcome back. This week, we are featuring the latest Icon Thriftmaster build. Specifically, it is a 1951. It is TR number 24, and it is quite nice, don't you think? I think it came out really well. So let's see here. We have this lovely dark green. And yes, we did another dark green one recently. But it is not the same green as the one that we built a couple months back. It's new and unique to itself. So this truck on the exterior is built in the old school style, but inside we did the new school style interior. I'm noticing with the Thriftmaster clients, they like elements of the different specs and we let them kind of mix it up and blend it more than we normally do. But I think they made some great choices. As you see, this one features the cattle guards. Seems like ever since we built the first set of cattle guards, everyone wants the cattle guards. So we keep playing with this shape and this flow of form. I want it to mirror the shape of the rear fender as much as possible. All blind hardware built by a wonderful staircase and furniture maker for us. And this wood's a really unique species. So this is, it's basically mesquite, but American mesquite, super curvy and knotted and craggly and twisty. So you'd never find enough linear wood planks to be able to pull it off. But in our research, we found there is a relative of mesquite uh, in Mexico that's fairly abundant and has the same dynamic and such a beautiful look. So you get this kind of warm honey and brown marbling and there's super all these knots and variants, it's, it's quite, quite nice. This client had us do the removable cargo hold downs in the bed. These function really nice and there's really no reason not to do them. So I get why they're so popular. The cattle guards obviously are also built in that same mesquite. You've got the center latch release drop down tailgate with the stainless elbow hinges. Here, I'll show you those again. Cause you know, from the factory, they had a hook eye, lasp, and chain that would just spank the back of the body and ruin your paint. And they never really definitively closed. They just kind of sort of closed enough to rattle around. So now you'll see the updated icon design features these bear claw latches. So it's super solid and when it's closed, it's properly closed. Because again, the outside is styled new school, old school hybrid. This client had us do the Icon Acid Etched ICON in the tailgate, pretty subtle branding. We also did the LED reverse lights into this otherwise useless and impossible to paint properly cavity in the end of the bed rails. And we did our lovely new school tail lights that are built by our buddies down in the south at uh, Greening Automotive. Really fine, fine work. We pretty much convert all the years now to the later style push versus twist drop exterior door handles. The early ones, they droop. They just don't work very well. These work quite nice. We use the Altman latches, which seem to be the best solution on the market. Although pretty soon, I think I'm going to look into designing my own because they still leave a fair bit to be desired. Mechanically, since we introduced the sport chassis, Everyone has ordered only the sport chassis and I do not blame them. So four wheel independent suspension, rack and pinion power steering, get about three degrees of rear steer, our sport hydro boosted Brembo brakes. It's literally a sports car wearing the body of an old farm truck. So it's uh, quite surprising when you sneak up on someone or gutter ball them or tear after that Porsche in the canyon they can really hold up to it. So we have all of the Thriftmasters. We are running our beloved General Motors E-Rod 6.2 LS3. So those come with pre-cat, post-cats. They come with wideband O2s super refined, as efficient as a high output V8 is ever gonna be, but beautifully tuned. We do our own dyno mapping on them to just get them the way we want them precisely.
This client had the wisdom to select the Tremec 6-speed. I'm so pleased to see an uptick in manual transmission orders. Maybe it's all the ranting in my videos. You'll notice the layout and the engine bay of these. We try and keep it really clean, but not so like hot rod smoothie that you can't access the things you need. So you see that up high on the firewall. That's the reservoir for the clutch master cylinder. There's the Willwood master to the Hydrotech PSC. Uh, really good hydro boost system. The controller computer for the E rod, we mount dead center on the firewall and then directly flanking it left and right are our aerospace uh, Deutschtech bulkhead fittings for principal harnesses. Tucked over in the inner fender on the passenger side close to the cab is the battery charger connector. So then you can still close the hood, but keep it on a tender if you're out of town or not gonna be playing with it for a while. We did the traditional style chrome trim on this one. We did the traditional style front Chevrolet badge and script. We color matched it with the principal body color. We also did that on the side badges. These are the icon ones and we color matched the infill of the green. We did our smooth old school wheels, powder coated in a slightly different tone of green for durability, the client didn't want paint. Of course, we're running Michelins. We love the Michelin Pilot Sports in the front and in the rear, we're running 275-45ZR18s. Really good tire, they stick, they aren't brutal, they're nice and quiet. They're a really good high performance tire. The body is an original body. The bed is new. The rest of the body is 1951. Now we strip these bodies down to white metal like the Broncos. Then we do all the metal work. Then we powder coat them. Then we conventionally paint them. Then we polyurea coat them on the underside of all the fender panels and bed and cabin and then on the inside of the cabin but you can't see it because of the carpet and everything uh, speaking of the cabin let's go inside and i'll show you around inside it's a really nice clean very traditional looking interior so on this one we kind of mixed up new school and old school elements as i said before the client really liked the functionality and the aesthetic of the new school dash which it's kind of hard to argue. So we took the original rib design of the center speaker and ashtray and glove box of the original truck, but then we expanded on that language. So this is all 6061 billet aluminum that's machined and then chromed. We extend all the way to the driver's side. So that becomes your outboard AC vent. It's mirrored on this side. And then you have two more AC vents in the center. Clean, sanitary, low impact, retro, but when you're actually needing functionality, you get reverse camera, you get tetherless car play, you get excellent navigation, you get voice control and CD and HD and yada, yada, yada. These Pioneer NEXs are lovely. These cabins are so small that the audio works surprisingly well with just two principal front speakers and one bass put in the rear of the cab. We thought about adding more speakers, but there's really no direct fit line of sight for rear speakers anyway. And once we sound chambered it and did the proper audio engineering, best sounding audio we offer. This is still just an old school glove box, but we kept that sexy functionality. And it's all metal and then coated in like a mouse fuzzy fabric. So your stuff's not clamoring and rattling around. Center dash underneath the drop down You've got lights, wiper, fan, vent, and temp. Then you have power ports, high-speed USBs, 3.0s. These are all infill. These are all my design. They have nothing to do with the stock, but they're part of the design language that we created for the truck that continues to the little handle portion of the window regulator as well as the armrest. Take note of our seat recline hardware. I'm really proud of them. They're just a really nice fluid kind of deco low -y design. They're picking up off that factory dash language. But you know, the factory seat supplier, that's just a chunk of plastic and that seems to be cool 
with most high-end pro builders, but it's that kind of thing that is just up my bum. I cannot tolerate it. We piped the seating in the green leather that matches the body color. The rest of this sort of beautiful cognac kind of picked up the tonality values of the mesquite wood. Of course, the column dress up. So all of these designed, made by Icon to give that language consistent flow. You've got tilt, you've got turn. This side, you've got the flashers. The steering wheel's totally wrong for the truck. It's actually a Tri-5, 5567 Chevy Bel Air situation. Gauges are the usual new school fare. Right here to the right of the gauges, that's your parking brake. So it won't go on if you mistakenly hit it with the key on or while driving. But when you power down, it uses a worm gear driven by an electric motor to tug on those mechanical parking brake calipers on the Brembo's for a really strong and stout hold. When you are ready to power up, it disengages pretty damn quick. By the time you have your seatbelt on, you're good to go and it's no problemo. Of course, we did the power door locks on this truck. We also did our power windows that feature the one touch. So they look like a stock window regulator. You tap once to go down, duh tap once to go up or double tap down on either door and all windows down, all windows up. We have our hidden cup holders. These are actually from the Mercedes G-Wagon. Kind of hard to find a good spot for cup holders in these small cabs. And this really seems to be the best solution that we've found. It works out just fine. Been playing with doing one center of the seat underneath, but it gets a bit crowded and ergonomically that reach it's almost seemingly more awkward than reaching to the kick. Also, we like to use that area to create the little foam pouch section for you. So on that front plane of the seat, there's a stitched leather pouch that's convenient for like whatever, glasses, phone, wallet. The center armrest is good when you're canyon carving, helps keep you from sliding around. But when you've got third passenger with you or third occupant with you, it folds back up and you know, decent enough as a backrest. Lap belt for center, three points for outboard. We run this updated to an LED. Visors, leather wrapped, stock bases, custom heads. Headliner, we totally bail on the pizza box stock headliner. And we use Alcantara with layers of Dynamat. And that's form fit direct to the sheet metal. So you gain almost three inches of headroom, which is really welcomed. Retro, not stock, keeps this kind of cool, you know, it's got the finned aluminum styling, but it has the night high, day low, which is really quite useful. Wipers look stock, but they're running a three-speed motor with delay function. Of course, the entire wire harness is our design by an aerospace builder using the best possible everything down to the grade of crosslink wire, down to the shrink wrap, down to the Bosch relays, down to the Deutsche Tech connectors and the Packards and just all high end quality. All of that stuff is all centrally located directly underneath the driver's seat. So there's gas shocks. You grab the seat bottom and it articulates up and then you have access to everything from the amplifier settings to your digital sound processor to all fuses, all relays. All circuits are clearly marked and identified. Same with all fuses. And it's just a nice setup and seemed like a really good use of what was otherwise some dead space. Rugs on this truck, Hargarten Square Weave, which you know us to love and use quite frequently. Those are lined in Dynamac and then they're leather hemmed. There's multiple layers. So you can soil up the top layer, or if you know you're gonna get really dirty, turn it over to the rubber. Then you have the second layer, and then you pull that back, you see the polyurea coating on the body, which is great for corrosion, heat, and sound protection. Uh, so let's see, what else? Oh, I know, one last detail. Well, same idea executed several ways. So this was a gift from a family 
to the matriarch of the family, to Mama. So we got their sort of logo for their ranch and explored different ways to create little, some subtle, some not so subtle Easter eggs that over time she's going to discover. So one thing we did is on the armrest, we embossed her initials on the center back of the cab. We machined this, which is the principal B logo of their ranch. And that's kind of nice and cool. It's a beautiful design. I wonder what the history is. Then we also fit one infilled in the body green with a little personal message to mom on the inside of the passenger door, celebrating their love for her and celebrating her birthday. And I thought it was super sweet. And then last but not least, we like, Cal branding iron branded it into the cattle guards in the mesquite wood. And I think it's nice. I hope she appreciates it. Her family and the whole team at Icon really did spend a lot of time making sure it was personal. And that's what we try and do with everything we build. So thanks for watching. You guys digging this new format? Less of my old white head yakking at you. More beautiful vehicle shots in detail. I hope so because they're harder to shoot. We're hoping it's worth it. I appreciate your time. We appreciate your support in any manner. Um, feel free to comment, ask questions. I try to be readily accessible and answer everybody. Spread the word. Like the video. Share it with your friends. Follow the feed. Follow us on social. All those things that really do make a difference. We really do appreciate it. And until next time, be kind to yourself, be kind to the planet, be well.